Hello, and welcome back to my Pokemon Revolution Online Guide. As you no doubt know by now, all of the gym leader battles in Pro are ramped up and the Elite Four are no exception. The Pokemon will be a much higher level and be EV trained too, most likely. You might have to grind up one or two Pokemon before you're ready to face them, but hopefully you'll be able to use most of the ones you've been using already throughout your journey. The recommended Pokemon to use are Gengar and Gyarados, probably with Thunderbolt. And I personally would recommend Honchkrow, because he's Dark type, so awesome against Agatha, and he has Sucker Punch, which has priority and goes first. The Elite Four can be beaten with a team of level 75s, or maybe even lower than that if you're pretty freaking epic. You ideally want to be able to comfortably beat the Elite Four, using only a handful of items to heal and revive your team between each battle. I mean, sure, you could get pretty far by spamming 15 revives and 20 super potions, but if you fail, that's an awful lot of money that you'd have to fork out again for another attempt. Now, your first opponent will be Lorelei. She specializes in ice Pokemon, which is ironic, as four out of the five of them are also water types. So, if you have a decent and very fast electric type, Lorelei will probably be no problem for you. Grass is the other type that's good against water, but with most of her team boasting a half ice type too, you'd be better off avoiding it. Same for fire. Although ice is weak against it, most of her Pokemon will have a water typing too. Fighting and steel are viable though, being the other types that beat ice. Rock, on the other hand, hates getting wet. It's worth noting though that Magnezone is both electric and steel, so his typing beats both of hers outright. Her first Pokemon is Dugon, which is a water ice type. So just frazzle it to death with an electric or other super effective move. If it still lives after one attack, try and finish it off with a priority move before it gets a chance to attack again. Next is Slowbro, who is water psychic. I'm not too sure why he's here. Maybe he's just really cool and is pretending to be an ice type. Get it? Really cool? If you went of Gengar, his ghost type moves may help out here, but hopefully you can just KO him with electricity. If for some reason your Pokemon of choice faints here, a good swap in would be that Honchakura I mentioned earlier. His dark type Sucker Punch will just destroy Slowbro, and it'll go first to boot. Up next is Lapras, a good old water ice type. Lapras is traditionally much more bulkier, so you may at this point lose or have to switch out to a new Pokemon before she'll go down. Because you'll be spending longer in battle with Lapras, expect to potentially get frozen by Ice Beam and plan around it. Jinx is your next threat, another psychic type, as well as being ice. So that Hunchcomb may be of use here as well. She'll probably confuse your Pokemon with some sweet kisses, so be warned. Lorelei's final Pokemon is Cloyster, which is another ice water type and usually has a lot of defense and hit points. Now be careful here, Cloyster has Ice Shard, which although it only has an attack power of 40, it does have priority. Next up in the Elite Four is Bruno, the fighting type master. Only three of his five Pokemon are actually fighting types, the other two are rock and ground. So have those flying or psychic types on standby and bring along something grassy or watery too, mayhaps. First up is Onyx, who is rock ground, and will crumble to most water or grass attacks. Throw in a punch or kick in there too with a fighting type and you'll find he'll go down pretty quickly. Next up are three pure fighting types, Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee and Machamp, who are all very similar, with the exception that Machamp is a bit bulkier and has ice punch. Use your flying, psychic or even fairy types here if you have them. Just perhaps avoid using a flying type versus those ice punches mind. Bruno's final Pokemon is that second Onyx. So pull back your flyer to avoid those rock moves and finish him off with some good old water grass action. Agatha is your next opponent. She loves ghosts and poison and is generally a little bit creepy. Still got that Honchkrow kicking around? What about a Gengar? You do? Excellent. Well have at it then. Also Psychic is pretty good against her poison types too. Unsurprisingly she starts off with the classic ghost poison type Gengar. So just slap him with some dark or psychic type moves and he should drop fairly easily. Then it's onto Crobat, who is poison flying. So again, a decent psychic move here should KO him fairly quickly. It wouldn't hurt if you have a couple of Thunderbolts left over either. Haunter is next. I know right, a non-max evolution Pokemon in a gym battle? Treat him much the same as you did Gengar, although note that he has Hex, which will do double damage if your Pokemon has a status effect on them. On to Arbok, who is pure poison. If you've got a ground type hanging around on your team, now's his turn to dish out some pain. 
or you could just psychic the poor little snake to death. Now, Agus's final Pokemon is Mega Gengar. His typing remains the same as the regular Gengar, but he's much faster and his special attack is a lot stronger too. I found that Sucker Punch here worked very, very well. Mostly because it completely negated Mega Gengar's immense speed by the fact that it always goes first due to its priority. Well done, you're almost there. Next up is the Dragon type master Lance. All of his team look like awesome dragons, but only two of them are actually of the dragon typing. Having a fairy type here wouldn't be too bad of an idea. You see, although most of his team aren't dragon types, they still use dragon type moves, which a fairy type is completely immune to. First out is Gyarados, who is water flying. Presuming you beat Lurelei with an electric type, you can just rinse and repeat here. Next is the not so fully evolved Dragonair, who is a pure red dragon type. Ice, Dragon and Fairy are super effective here. Dragonite is next, who upon evolving from Dragonair, decided to add flying to his typing, making him even weaker against ice type moves. So now is the time to use them if you haven't before. Also you might want to take advantage of the fact that he'll most likely use Dragon Dance in his first turn, powering up to sweep your entire team. He also has Outrage, which when used, means he can't use a different attack other than that for several turns. So switching into a fairy to negate all of the damage is a good plan for that. Aerodactyl is up next, the flying rock type. I should do the trick here, but water, grass, fighting and steel can work too. His rock slide will obliterate any flyers you have, so be careful. His penultimate Pokemon is Tyranitar, rock and dark. Fighting and fairy will hit him hard, fighting especially so, as will water and grass, etc. Finally, Lance will bring out his prized Charizard, which is fire flying. Throw some water or rocks at Charizard and hopefully the battle is yours. If this fight is difficult for you, Bear in mind that his Flare Blitz move will hurt himself with recoil, so you could potentially try and heal through it, and let him KO himself. You've done it! Congratulations! You've beaten the Elite Four! You're the Pokemon League Champion! Just as long as no one stands in your way who might have become champion moments before you did. God damn it, Gary! If at any point a particular Pokemon is a problem, a viable yet expensive strategy is to throw out a Pokemon that is resistant to the moves of your opponent, or a Pokemon with a lot of defense and hit points, and use that time to revive and heal some choice Pokemon from your selection of fainted. Next is Gary Frucken 10 out of 8 Kanto Badges Oaks. This will probably be your toughest fight so far, because you can't just train up one specific Pokemon to deal with an entire gym leader, like you might have done before with say Honchko and Agatha, or Raichu and Lorelei. You see, Gary has a balanced team, so hopefully your team has some semblance of balance too. He'll start with the hardly ever used Pidgeot, I mean, who chooses one of the first Pokemon you ever encounter in the wild for their team? We all know that the only reason Pidgeot is in your team is probably because it knows fly. Poor Pidgeot. Like any flying type you come across, you want to use ice or electricity against it. Hopefully Pidgeot was out for the count pretty quickly, so now it's on to Gary's next Pokemon, Alakazam, who is pure psychic. So again, dust off that dark or ghost type and have at him. Keep in mind that unless you're really, really high level, even if you've speed EV trained, He'll probably outspeed you. Rhydon is next, another ground rock type like Onyx. So he shouldn't be a problem for you if Onyx wasn't. Note though that Rhydon will probably set up a stealth rock to hurt future Pokemon that you switch in. The extremely fast Arcanine is next. He's pure fire. He shouldn't be too much trouble to dispatch. Just keep in mind that not only is he really, really fast, he also knows Thunderfang. Next, Gary will bring out his Mega Blastoise who is, as you well know, pure water. He has a very high defense and special defense, and may very well be the hardest on Gary's team. What you could do is bring out a water type yourself, say Blastoise. And for some reason, the only move the Mega Blastoise will use is Rapid Spin. I guess he figures using a water type move is pointless. Rapid Spin, if you don't know, is used for clearing hazards on the arena, and isn't known for doing a whole lot of damage. Couple that with your Blastoise also having a decent defense, you can just whittle him down and win easily. Now, I realize most of you won't have a Blastoise, either because you chose Charmander or Pikachu at the start of the game, rip Bulbasaur, or because you found a different water type to complement your team. So in that case, you'll have to whip out a decent electric or grass type, methinks. Mega Blastoise has a massive amount of hit points, but since Toxic's damage is percentage based, that'll knock him dead in no time. So use Toxic if you have it. Finally, Gary will bring out Executor, the Grass Psychic type. Fire, Ice and Flying are decent here, as are Ghost and Dark. 
but if you have a bug type move, use it because it will be 4 times super effective. Executor's Woodhammer will hit hard and hurt it with recoil. Don't underestimate this Pokemon, it can also be a pretty tricky battle. It certainly took me 2 attempts before I beat Gary. But hopefully, with Executor knocked out, you can finally stand victorious over the Kanto region as its new champion. Actually, the champion this time. With the Kanto region under your belt, it's time to look towards Johto. I know this episode was a much requested one, and I'm not promising anything, it takes a lot of work to make these episodes. But like and comment below if you'd like me to continue this guide into the Johto region. Thank you all so much for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you for my next video.